Good day to you. Today, we're going to be looking at leaning or precariously damaged boundary walls. You've got a boundary wall, you're a trustee, you're a director, the wall's starting to lean over, and you don't know what to do. Okay, so we're going to give you some guidance. Also, what's actually quite exciting is today we're going to give a free giveaway. So you're going to get the points I'm going to discuss in checkbox form or step form, the 10 steps. You can download them with the QR code at the end of this video. So there we go, a little toolbox, a free tool for you. Okay, so let's get moving. So the first thing you notice is movement. Maybe the, the one of the walls is moving away from the others and a gap is coming and the wall starting to lean. And you're concerned about it, and rightly so. As a director and trustee, you need to follow some action. What do you do? Okay, do you go to your textbook and have a look and look up leaning walls? No, there isn't such a textbook. You come and you ask your managing agent or you speak to us as your broker. Okay, as your broker, I'm gonna show you where we fit in. Um, and here I'm gonna go through some of the practical steps. It's just practical steps. It's not deemed as real advice. It's really the practical steps and where the broker fits in. Okay, so first of all, safety. Safety first. Step one, safety. And of course, always, always consider safety first. You've got tenants, you've got owners, you've got residents. You might have owner residents. And of course, you have visitors, children around, etc. Safety is a priority. Make the area safe. Cordon it off if you're concerned. If there's an imminent danger of a collapse or anything like that, make sure the area is safe. First, to make sure the children can't play there. And secondly, make sure that there's no cars parked there or expensive assets parked there. You don't want an injury and you don't want damage or loss to property. Okay, safety. Okay, the second thing to do is to then call in a professional to come and actually give you guidance as to what to do about this. Okay, you need to actually know what the cause is, what's causing the problem, and how do I stop it, and how do I fix it. An engineer, somebody like Philip Nell from NABA and his team can come along and have a look and give you some guidance. Any structural engineer that specializes, um, but uh, certainly get one that's familiar with community schemes and the processes. They can come out, they can do an inspection, and they can give you a report. That report is key. Okay, once you've got that report, you can deal with it. Meanwhile, you will be documenting the damage. So it's actually point three. So document everything that's going on. Take photographs. Picture tells a thousand words. You know, when it started on that date, you've got a photograph, take another photograph afterwards. Maybe it's gaps widening uh, or the wall's leaning more, or it's more damp is happening or it's bulging more or whatever. Take photographs and keep a, a keep track of a timeline, a record, okay, as trustees or the estate manager, or as directors. Okay, um, documenting the damage is also good for um, for insurance claim purposes later or even the engineer, it might be useful information for the engineer to see what's happening. Okay, then um, you need to disclose and review with your insurance broker. And two things, you would call your insurance broker in perhaps even initially as part of the initial step, but you would get your broker to actually come and help you. The best time the broker is going to say to you, I certainly would use, let's get an engineer there. I would come and visit perhaps if it was me um, at the same time as the engineer if possible or wait for the engineer's report. Have an initial look at it. I would also take photographs and try and get and document what's going on. Um, but part of the documentation process is actually disclosing to the insurance company that there is this problem so that you can actually do the disclosure officially. The disclosure is important so that the insurance company can decide on whether they're going to still hold you covered in certain respects. And of course, you don't want to have non-disclosure, whereas it would mean that you automatically wouldn't have the cover anyway. So rather disclose, be honest, show the insurance company, and they might actually be able to give you some guidance as well. When I say guidance, they might be able to point you in a certain direction or give you 
um, some idea of what they will or won't do uh, in terms of the future. Then um, your broker can actually help you to ascertain whether there's any chance of a claim. There might be a cause, an underwrite or approximate cause that might be causing the lien, might be a sudden event, but um, usually if it's roots or something that's happening over time, it wouldn't be a claim. So nine out of 10, it's not going to be a claim, but tick that box. Make sure that the broker has helped you, guided you. You've got um, that box ticked. In other words, no, it's not a claim, or yes, it might be a claim, but at least clear that out of the way so that you can move forward and do your financial planning. Okay, then um, you need to actually prevent further damage. That's part and parcel of the contract of insurance. Anyway, make sure that obviously nothing further can go on. If it's something is pushing the wall, you need to stop that. Whatever is pushing the wall, it might uh, be part of the remedial action. Okay, then um, see what the report says and, uh, um, you know, uh, find out what your repair and, um, or replacement options are. Can you just brace the wall? Do you have to knock the whole thing down? You know, what are your options and what's best? And, and take your guidance from your structural engineer uh, as to what you need to do. Then you go through the quote process. You're going to get quotes from the various people on what can be done in terms of the options. Okay, and there again, option A uh, might have a quote, and then option B would have a quote, maybe from the same person. And then you can make that call with your engineer's advice. The trustees need to advise very prudently. Okay, we say that when you're obtaining your, your different quotes or your multiple quotes, do it on a tender basis if the project is anything substantial. You know, anything substantial is 10 grand or more, I would consider maybe 20,000, 30, 40, 50,000. Uh, definitely get an engineer or somebody to project manage and do a tender process for you. You know, various companies, as I said, NABA, structural engineer, Philip's team, uh, Philip Nell's team, or otherwise people like Project Lab, um, very, very good company, Curasure, and one or two others. You know, get a professional to actually oversee or project manage for you. Definitely a tender process. Um, make sure that whatever you do is compliant. You've got the necessary local authority permissions. Uh, whether you need any permits to do anything or whether you need plans, uh, just make sure that everything is compliant. You don't want to go building the old wrong wall uh, if that was the cause because it wasn't built properly in the first place. You now want to build it properly um, and make sure that it's not doing things that, it's, uh, that it wasn't designed to do. Okay, and then of course, always through the process, communicate with your residents. Um, let your residents know, I'm not talking about just the owners, let the residents know what's going on. And it helps from a safety point of view. Wow, when is a contract gonna start? When are contractors, where are they gonna store their material? Where the, must the children not go? Um, you know, where is it gonna be cordoned off? Um, document that, let everybody know what's going on. Not only is it good practice, but it actually builds up good trust and people can see that your trustees are actually working and doing stuff for them. Okay, so yeah, build up that trust by communicating and of course for various safety reasons as well. And then going forward, once the job is completed and done, you know, don't just think it's done and dusted and that's it now for the next hundred years. You know, keep that, bring that into your maintenance plan, have that wall reviewed, uh, every year or two, you don't want the thing happening again. Make sure that there's no ponding behind the wall, that, you know, the walls are clear. Uh, they're not, not acting as a retaining wall if it's if it's just... Okay, so thank you very much. Don't forget, um, we've got this uh, little uh, widget at the end, the QR code, so you can download. And the points I've just raised for you are nicely set out for you uh, so that you can tick them off as you go along. Nice little tool for you, although it's a very simple tool. And then, of course, don't forget the three things, you know. Don't forget to like this uh, video, subscribe to our video channel, and, of course, feel free to share this far and wide. Thank you very much, and uh, see you next time.